CA Workload Automation A is a scalable automation solution that empowers IT developers with an environment that is easy to own and manage. It helps users with critical applications that ensure business processes run smoothly and continuously. All activity controlled by CA Workload Automation A is based on jobs. So what's a job? It's any single command, executable, Unix shell script or a Windows batch file. Each job definition contains attributes that specify the job's properties and behavior. In CA Workload Automation, you can define jobs in the CLI by using the job information language or the CAWCC, which is a user interface for CA Workload Automation A. Before we start with the demo to define jobs using the CLI and CAWCC, we assume that CA Workload Automation A and CAWCC are installed. Also, you have defined the machines where you want to execute the jobs. In this demo, we execute the jobs on the local host. Your security administrator must grant actions in the different CAEEM resource classes so you have the permissions to define, update or delete jobs. This table indicates the actions that must be granted by your security administrator in the different CAEEM resource classes to insert, update or delete a job. C indicates that you have permission to create the job. E indicates whether you can issue the send event command for the job. D indicates that you can delete the job. W indicates that you can edit the job. Let's consider a scenario where you want to create a file to log all the transactions done in a day. However, when this file reaches 50,000 bytes, you want to archive it in a directory on a remote server. For this scenario, we define three jobs, a command job to create the file, a file watcher job to monitor the size of the file, and an FTP job to archive the file. Let's go ahead and watch a quick demonstration. We will begin by logging into CAWCC. On the quick edit tab, let's click the create button and define a command job. Let's specify key parameters such as the name of the job and the location where it would execute. Did you notice that we have reference a batch file here? That batch file allows us to create a file that is logging all the transactions. In this demo, we entered values only for the required fields. Based on your requirement, you can specify the values for the optional fields that you see on this window. For example, if you want to set some date and time conditions on when the command job must run, specify the values in the use date or time condition field. Click commit to save the job. A confirmation message appears stating that the job has been successfully created. We will now define a file watcher job which will watch the size of the transaction's log file. Let's specify key parameters for the job. Since we want the job to complete when the file size reaches 50,000 bytes, enter 50,000 in the minimum file size field. Finally, let's now configure the job to check the existence and the size of the transaction's log file every 30 seconds. Click commit to save the job. A confirmation message appears stating that the job has been successfully created. Let's start the two jobs that we have defined.
we will now define a final job which will archive the transactions log file. Let's specify key parameters for the job. Now let's ensure that this job only starts after the watch underscore transactions job executes successfully. Let's specify the IP address of the machine and the port number of the server to where you want the file to be uploaded. Let's specify the destination location where you want to archive the file. Let's commit and execute the job. The transactions underscore log file is archived in the destination location. We have now learned how to define jobs by using the CAWCC. However, some users still prefer to use the CLI to define jobs. Let's take a quick peek at how these jobs can be defined by using the CLI. Let's start with a command job. Let's issue the sentiment command to start the two jobs. While defining these jobs using CLI, you would have noticed that insert underscore job subcommand and the machine and job underscore type attributes are mandatory. A box is a container for other jobs. You can define a box job to organize and manage large number of jobs with similar starting conditions. When no other start conditions are specified at the job level, a job in a box runs when the start conditions for the box are satisfied. When several jobs in a box do not have job level starting conditions, they all run in parallel. Another useful job that you can define is the box job. Let's create a box to include the three jobs we just created. To create a box named box underscore transactions, use the following JIL definition. When the box starts, the command job starts. As we define starting conditions for the jobs as success of the command job, the file watcher job will run after the command job completes successfully, and the FTP job runs on the successful completion of the file watcher job.
Before we conclude this video, I wanted to quickly talk about optional attributes. Every job has certain required and optional attributes. You can review the documentation to get an exhaustive list of attributes associated with each job. Based on the job type, you specify its required and optional attributes. For example, for a command job, the job type, machine and command attribute are required. These are the optional attributes that you can specify for a command job. Some attributes are common and apply to all the job types. The common optional attributes article in DocOps list these common attributes that are optional for all job types. In this video, we have covered how to define jobs using CAWCC and the CLI. To learn more about the product, visit the CA Workload Automation A Learning Paths page. You can take the trainings based on your role. Thank you for watching this video.